Art, in its various forms, is all around us, although it's not often you find artwork in the middle of the desert. Wow! Wow! The sheer size of this one. And you know what's really amazing about this one? Sometimes art inspires you, but then there's times like this where the making of the art inspires you just as much. Today we are at the Goldwell Open Air Museum right outside of Rhyolite, where art is wide open to the public. Suzanne, awesome. hi. How are hi, you? John. Nice to see you. Welcome to Goldwell. What an interesting place. I mean, this is the kind of place that really makes the desert fascinating, isn't it? It kind of makes it pop, you know? <laughs> it really does. Well, it's so different. Meet Suzanne Hackett Morgan. She's the museum's executive director. She's the one keeping Goldwell alive. How did it all happen? How did this whole place get well, like this? It started with a, an artist who, uh, his name is Albert Schukowski. He was from uh, Poland originally, Belgium most recently. And he was uh, going to San Francisco to visit his mother. He went through Death Valley and he's like, this is the place. This is the place where I want to realize my sculpture, The Last Supper. The Last Supper was the first major artwork created and installed at the Goldwell Open Air Museum in 1984. The Last Supper is obviously the genesis piece of this museum. It shows uh, the ghostly shrouds of Christ flanked by his 12 disciples at the Last Supper. The emotion that comes out of this feels almost peaceful, desperate, eerie and scary, all at the same time. Sukolsky created the figures by wrapping live models in wet plaster. After the plaster was set, the figures were eventually coated with fiberglass. It's something that's approachable for people. They're certainly welcome to climb inside it and walk around it. And notice, if you can, through the fiberglass and the paint, Albert's special sculptural touches in the folds of the fabric. Another popular sculpture, called Ghost Rider, served as a test piece for the Last Supper. So he's been still out here in the desert for a long time, but every day he asks the question, whose bike is this? I mean, is it his? Who does it belong to? Is he coming? Is he going? I think Albert wanted to see, with a single figure, how long is it going to take for the plaster to dry? You know, how, how how much time can the person sit in the plastic before they pass out? You know, that kind of thing. How many are here? Well, we have a total of nine large oversized sculptures. Um, seven of them were original pieces that were created by the Belgian artists, and we've added a couple since. Additional pieces were added to the museum site by three other artists in the early 1990s. As you'll discover, a lot of the sculptures have their own personality, from lighthearted, like the couch, to kind of, let's face it, Ghost Rider's pretty creepy. And I think part of it is because they were made around real human forms. And to some degree, real human suffering in August. The brightly colored couch is one of the most recent additions. The couch actually has a name. It's called Sit Here. It's got an exclamation point. Um, it was done by Sophie Siegmann, who was an artist in Germany. And she was an artist in residence at the Children's Museum in Las Vegas. And she did it with uh, the children there. They hand did the tiles. And it was well loved there for a long time. So when it was retired from the Children's Museum, it was out on the uh, loading dock. And I used to see it every day. And I kept thinking, you know, that would be a great piece at Goldwell. And it certainly turned into be one of our most popular pieces. Wow. The colors on this thing out here in the desert, they're just spectacular. And I can really see how the back of the couch mirrors the back of that mountain over there. 800 pounds, fully restored. I guess one man's trash is another man's treasure, right? Let me try this thing out here. Oh, yeah. I need a remote. Let me see here. Oh, honey, my favorite show's on, Outdoor Nevada. This is great. Who would you say this place belongs to? Well, number one, it belongs to all Nevadans, because Albert loved Nevada. But it's really for everybody. He wanted it to be experienced by as many people as possible. And, you know, we just ask, don't vandalize the work, you know, 
we're lucky that that has not been a problem for us, you know, in over 30 years. This isn't a natural history museum type of situation where they got to go through the gift shop. This belongs to everybody. That's right. It's it's here for you. I mean, that's and it's here for you to have your own experience of the art and to maybe make your own art as well as a as a starting place. It gives a framing for understanding what to do as an artist in this landscape. Albert always wanted it to be for people. That's why he didn't have any signs around or anything. He wanted it to be like this mysterious experience. It's a different experience for everybody. I mean, it's, you'll make it your own. I can't wait to make it my own. Thank you so much. Take care, bud. Okay, the word out here really with these sculptures is contrast. Because you see the blue sky and the colors of the desert and then these are stark white. And they're very active but they're very still at the same time. It's very eerie, but it's very peaceful. I can see why Albert would want you to make the drive out here in the middle of nowhere to see these for yourself.